Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the 90210 show. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my grooving girlfriend, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? I like the little dance that you did while we... <laughs> while the intro was playing. I'm excited to talk about 90210. It makes me dance. What can oh, I say? Oh, my goodness. Well, it is June 20th, 1997. Um, I'm a little distracted because I'm thinking we talked about well, what we might have for dinner. <laughs> now I'm thinking of all the possibilities. We're trying to eat healthier, too, so I'm trying to think of all the healthier possibilities. Right. So, like... Not Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, why did you say that? Because I did. Because I thought about Mexican pizza and how oh, wow. not bad for you it is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Better than regular pizza. Right. It's got to be, right? Right. <laughs> uh, but speaking of meals and dancing, we watched an episode of 90210 where... Uh, Steve makes a meal out of his deal with a producer and dances in the Walsh house. Okie dokie. He wears a meal at one point. Yes, he does wear a meal. Yes, he does pizza. Wow, that would have, what a perfect segue that would have been. <laughs> also, the girls have a meal that is hilarious. It's like a spoken word poem to me. But anyway... We'll get into it. What do you want to talk about first? Oh my goodness! Okay, what? How did you it, steer this show? How did it start? I think uh, it David... started with it started like this. No, I think it started with David and Valerie. It started so. It started a little bit before that. Okay. Oh. It started with the revelation that they were going, the girls were going to be going on a road trip. Oh, yeah. They're going up into the mountains to some spa for like a girls weekend. Yeah. I think like Big Sur or uh, something like that. Like, uh, you know, one of those in Northern Cal. They're, they're going up the PCH. Right. And for some reason, like Donna and was it Donna invited her? Claire. Donna was talking. No, Claire. Yeah, Claire invited her. Claire invited Valerie to come with them. It was supposed to be just Claire, Donna, and Kelly, which, by the way, is not a great idea for a road trip because three is a very unstable number for a group. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Get the crystals out. <laughs> Got to stabilize this number. Oh, jeez. I thought three was such like three, like the, the Triforce. Like, uh, I'm not talking about mystical shit. Steve. I'm talking about like... You know, human connection and socialization, three is a very unstable well, number. Well, let me tell you something. I have had some human connection. Oh, with, no, 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 no. With the number I three. do not want to hear about that. I will gouge my eardrums out, okay? No. You're right, though. It was unstable. Um, <sighs> <laughs> but anyway, so she... Uh, yeah, she's she Claire invites Valerie, or Valerie kind of invites herself, and Claire just agrees. However, that went Claire's that happens like, off screen. Claire's like she found out about it. What was I supposed to say? No, Donna even Donna was yeah was like already against her, which yeah. is is kind of a new thing because they were friends before, but she's been I guess slowly. Getting more and more angry at her? I don't know. Yeah, weirdly, it's like it's just been coming up in her brain, like, I'm mad at Valerie now. It's weird how the writers want to change directions with characters. Yeah. And it's they're very mercurial. It's like all of a sudden they decide, like, ah, we want to do something different with this character, and they just contrive the plot to fit that. So we end up, all four girls are going on a trip. Mm-hmm. David comes over to Valerie as she's packing. <laughs> David walks up to Valerie. It's probably more appropriate way to say Well, he it. comes to her house. She's packing oh God, in her bedroom. Love that word, don't you? I do love that word. Um, but yeah, he does. And I don't even remember what the excuse was. He was bringing her something. And uh, he ends up kissing her. They're talking about how he's like, yeah, you really helped me through some dark times. 
last week on 90210. <laughs> she was like, yeah, I remember the episode. And um, he's, she goes, I've been thinking a lot about you, too. Because, you know, she was in, or he was in uh, her dream, you know, where he killed her dad. And um, so then, yeah, he kisses her. And it looks like she's taken aback. Yeah, she just looks like she's in shock. The whole time. I thought she was going to, like, say, no, no, no. Right. That's the look. That was the look on her face. But. And I was upset because I'm like, no, I want those two to get together. But he just, like, backs his way out of the room real fast before (laughs) she can react in any way. It was kind of funny. He's like, okay, have a good weekend. Bye-bye. And, like, Moon walks out the door. He's like like that episode (laughs) of The Simpsons where where Homer just retreats into the bushes. Right. (laughs) So, Yeah. She's a little shell shocked and ends up in a car with uh, three blonde ladies on their way up to right. <laughs> three bottle blondes and one natural brunette. And Donna sounds like the uh, sounds like the opening to a film that Steve would want uh, to be made. At oh yes, House. for sure. <laughs> you know, weirdly though, like Donna's kind of cranky the whole time. Yeah, like I, even from the beginning. Did you ever hear uh, about because it was. Because she's carsick. Hmm? I don't know. I thought maybe that could be something, but it wasn't anything. Well, because they're talking about, like, their best kisses and their best, you know, whatever. They're They're, talking about sex. They're playing a a driving game of, like, sort of, like, truth or dare. But but just truth. Yeah, I guess, like, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what what that game is, but it's basically just, like, I don't know. Getting to know you, icebreakers or whatever. It's category, not categories. Uh, scruples. Sure. Do you ever hear that game, Scruples? I love Scruples. Yeah, it's a fun like game. That. It's like that. Well, when they do all, first of all, was she already complaining, Donna? Before this, I don't think so. Well, she was. She was cranky before they got in the car. Yeah, she was cranky at, at the Max or not the Max. That's uh, fucking not, or not Saved by the Bell. She was cranky at the Peach Pit. Okay. So Kelly says her best kiss ever was with Dylan, and Out everybody the beach. and ev- yeah, the when she, when they cheated on Brenda apparently. Yeah, I'm um, <laughs> she's like that night on the beach. I'll All never right. forget it. So the other two girls, Donna and Claire, both say David is their best kiss. Right, and then well, so I, I let's unpack Kelly's answer a little bit. Okay, because she does say Dylan. Yes. And then she says, well, Brandon wins for consistency. What does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> Can you be an inconsistent kisser? I, 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 I don't I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's one of those things that you kind of do roughly the same each time. You with, with some think. With some variation. You know, right. there's obviously more gentle, rougher, you know, more passionate, all that kind of stuff. But roughly the same kiss most people i think have the same like three or four moves when it comes to kissing well and like okay maybe that's what she means maybe she means the consistency of his mouth (laughs) i don't know his mouth never changes (laughs) what an amazing mouth (laughs) no Um, like like when you're making like bread right like you want the dough (laughs) This is not where I thought you were going, but go ahead. You want the dough to get to a certain consistency. It's like like the way it feels, right? Like you, Brandon's just... kiss is a good mouth feel. That's what you're saying. Yes. It's like the word chocolate. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. Not maybe not when he grew that goatee, that was inconsistent. Yeah, that was a weird weird couple episodes uh so yeah she says he wins for consistency and colin wins for passion okay which doesn't or intensity intensity yeah um but nothing will beat that night with dylan where he must have had both consistency and passion (laughs) (laughs) he had proofed his mouth (laughs) <laughs> up to a a consistent finish. There you go. Yeah, very nice. Now, might I just add quickly here that uh, Donna looked really intrigued when uh, when Kelly was talking about what oh, a good yeah. kisser that Dylan was. I think Donna wants to fuck him. Uh, Donna's kissed him. She has. Yeah, we, we when the under the mistletoe that Christmas episode. They did. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, not like hugely passionate, passionate kiss, but he did give her a kiss. Oh, well, then she I guess. She was like, I'm under the mistletoe, and he, like, she, like friendly kiss. But yeah, I, th- I still think she looked intrigued. And like you said, I think it's all, it's all part of it with those two. Hmm. Something weird is going on behind the scenes with those two. <laughs> but then the other two... Both say David. All right, David. Apparently, then, David's a very good kisser, I guess. Yeah, they don't really go into... Kelly's never kissed David, detail. by the way. Well, yeah, because he's her stepbrother. That'd be gross. I know, but... Um, unless she had stuck in the dryer. But... Um, what? <laughs> nothing. But... Um, yeah, like... She's the only one in that car that's never kissed him. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And everyone else in that car that's kissed him says him. So he must be pretty good. Right. Who's who's, who's uh, your best kisser ever? Uh, you. Okay. That looks like a lot. No, it's not. It's just like you would ask me that question like when we're recording. Like that's a weird question to ask me. It's it wouldn't hurt my feelings if it wasn't me. But it is you. Okay. Anyway, I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> who's your best? Kiss? Never, never ask. Never uh, ask a question you don't know the answer to. That's a lawyer trick. Right. Who's my best kiss ever? Yeah. Valerie. Fuck you. <laughs> you mean in your head you, when you fantasize you, about Valerie. Obviously. 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 You know you're a good kisser. But back it up, okay? You said everybody <laughs> else in the <laughs> car. <laughs> yeah. You said everybody else in the car says David. But let's talk about that for a second because Donna says David. Mm-hmm. Donna has kissed. Like romantically, David and Ray and Ray and uh, that one fucking jerk that called her a slut or whatever, the rich guy that her mom liked. Oh, yeah. Um, And I I mean, maybe a couple other people that we're not thinking of, but I mean, not not a lot. She hasn't had a lot of kisses. Right. And but what I'm saying is, OK, she says that Claire mentions David. I think she brings up their night when they were alien hunting or whatever. Yes. And when they uh, fucked and aliens watched, which she doesn't know, but did happen. Then they ask Valerie, and she thinks for a second, and she's like, I guess I'd have to say David, too, mm-hmm. which is a big deal. That is a big revelation. Nobody knows she kissed David. They're like, What? When? When well, did you kiss him? Happens. And she's like, Oh, this morning. And they're like, What? He kissed me this morning. And yeah. Donna's like, You're a fucking whore. Donna gets so pissed. Like, I have never seen her. Like, she looks more pissed about Valerie and David kissing when she's not going out with David than she did when he fucked Ariel. I swear to God. Like, she is very angry. Well, you know, you called it. You called it that she was going to be mad. As soon as they kissed, you said, well, maybe this will make Donna mad, cause her problems with Ray, and they'll break up. Yeah. Well, it didn't cause her problems with Ray directly. No, but I mean, it. you know, you called a lot of what yeah. happened here. So, yeah, so she's very, very angry at Valerie. And then um, she asks Valerie. The entire car turns against her. Oh, yeah. Well, it was a, not a great thing. Because- I mean, like, they're like, oh, you're a fucking whore. You've slept around. You're your fucking bitch. Like, everyone's aggressively piling on Valerie. Yeah. Well, and then, though. You see such a pretty woman. See? <laughs> Maligned. Well, that's what happens, though, honey. The prettier the girl, the more catty and mean the other girls are going to be. Oh, that's why everyone's mean to you. <laughs> right. Um, so Donna asks Valerie about Ray. Did you sleep with him? And she admits it. Well, she basically says, once and for all, I want to know what happened between you and Ray. And she said, we had sex twice. Yep. And Donna makes Claire pull the car over because she has to throw up. That is how upset she is. Yeah. So Valerie has kissed the guy that she apparently is still in love with and slept with the guy that she's currently with. Right. Twice. Yeah. And she kind of like fucking, you know, says, hey, this is, we're just going to be honest and, and they get everything out in the open. So she tells her everything, basically. And yeah. then... Uh, I think it's at this point, right, that the car won't start. Yeah. After they after they get out of the car, and I don't think they do any more driving, and then Claire goes and tries to start the car, and it won't start. Right. And then a nun drives up. <laughs> this show's got something with fucking religion, man. Guardian angels be like, hey, maybe we should get Donna and uh, Valerie <laughs> in a, a place together. Um, And, uh, you know, all the 
shit that happens. But, um, yeah, a nun drives up in a... What the fuck kind of car was that? I don't know. It was like a Studebaker or something. Like, it was a very old, like kind of expensive car. But, yeah, she, she saves their butts because they're on their way up a mountain, but it looks pretty desert-like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, they're in the middle of nowhere. And uh, she says that they were apparently on the wrong road since they started up the mountain. Because Claire was taking a shortcut. She says they are miles away from their destination. <laughs> so everybody's pretty pissed at Claire, too. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm wondering, though, like, we never really talk about how they get home. Oh, they, they mention it. They do. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll okay. when we get there, I'll okay. tell you. So they're going to spend the night at the convent. I don't understand that part. Well, here's... So I don't know if... I don't remember if they explicitly stated it or not. Or if it's just implied. But the nun drives them up to the convent because she's they're near there. And she's, and the implication is you, you can have someone look at your car in the morning. No one's available to look at your car right now. But someone can look at your car in the morning. What, one of the other nuns? Like, who's looking at their car? They just call a mechanic out. We never see it. Here's the thing. We never see it. And I'll, I'll just get to it now, how, how they get home. Uh, they close the lid and Claire goes, I can't believe it was just a blown, f- or uh, uh, not a blown fuse. It was just a uh, faulty water pump or something like that or mm. water hose. It was something like that. Uh, and she's like, I can't believe it was just that. And then they, that presumably their car is fixed and they drive home. But I guess they called like a wrecker, like, you know, to come to the convent and like a mechanic okay. and, and he fixed it. But that's, I don't remember if they, if she says it outright, oh, we can get someone to look at it in the morning or what, but that's the implication. That makes sense. While they are at this convent, though, they are given a room, which is very, it's very, very nice of them to take them in over mm-hmm. the night like this. Yeah, and to give them one room. Right. So the four four girls are sharing a room and they are told that it is silent in the convent, no talking at all from sundown to sunrise. I assume that's a thing. I mean, I, I know people take vow of, vows of silence, but usually those last years or, or weeks or months. Yeah, I mean, I've heard of monks doing it. I've never heard of nuns doing it. But if it, and very specifically, from sundown to sun up. But I'm going to assume that's not just a narrative device, that that actually exists in, in certain yeah, orders. I'm sure. You know, they said it was so that they could, you know, focus on God or whatever. Right. Makes sense. The mysticism and silliness of the Catholic Church is uh, on full display. Silliness? What? It's not, I don't think that's silly. To honestly. not talk? Yeah, to to be silent so you can focus on God. Our whole our whole deal here, Carol, is that we just, all we do is talk. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you would combust. You would just, like, I don't know what would happen to you if you couldn't talk for that long. But it'd be a problem. Yeah, it would be a problem. <laughs> so Colin calls Kelly. I took a vow of silence once for an entire day. Oh, yeah, I remember you telling me that story. Do you want to share? Sure. I took a vow of silence. I decided I wasn't going to speak at all. This was uh, one of the years I was in high school. <laughs> and I, in anticipation of it, I wrote a bunch of cards. The, what made me proudest about this thing is that I understood human nature to a degree that I could pull this off. (laughs) So I made a bunch of cards with like, yes, no, and stuff like that. And I knew everyone was going to want to ask to see the cards. So I put them in a certain order to where every and everyone did. They were like, Hey, you know, can I see your cards? And it was like, yes, no, you know, and I don't remember a bunch of other stuff. The last card, and I made sure it was the last card on the pile said, Oh my God, we're all going to (laughs) die. (laughs) <laughs> and then everyone that did that would be like, what is this one for? And then I would pull out the hidden card from my pocket that said, just in case. <laughs> I love it. As if in the event that something like that were, was going to happen, I was still wouldn't talk. You must have been such a blast to go to school with. I, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> um, But anyway, yeah, so I did take a vow of silence. But... They are taking a vow of silence, sort of. Well, they're they're following the rule of no talking, basically. Yeah. And then they, they have a meal to 
together. They yes. share a meal where we get, as I alluded to, the spoken word poem uh, portion of the episode where we just see each of their faces and there's a voiceover. Of, like It's like Margot Kidder in that Superman movie where she's talking about flying and stuff and the ridiculousness. Yeah, it's an internal monologue mm-hmm. from each of the girls about what they're thinking about. And Claire's mostly thinking about pass me the potatoes. <laughs> yeah. And she's like glaring daggers across the table, like looking at the potatoes and looking at was it who was it, Kelly? It was Kelly. Yeah. yeah it was hilarious. That was that was the like, best part. <laughs> nodding her head towards the potatoes was great. Um most of them are thinking about what a bitch Valerie is. Yeah. True. And then at night when they go to bed, we, we get it highlighted exactly how much of a little girl Donna is. Oh, yeah. Because in her head, she's saying the now I lay me down to sleep prayer that I used to say every night when I was a child. Me as well. And then God bless and listing the people. Sure. And I used to do that sure. too. God yep. bless all the people you yep. love. and Exactly. Donna still does it at, what, 22 years old now? Like, or no, she's probably only 19, but still. I think she's 21. I think, they're, I think they've all turned 21. Okay. So, yeah. So, she's still... Not that there's anything wrong with praying. I still pray, too. But it's you such would a think, little child prayer. Yeah. You would think that her prayer would mature as she matures, mm-hmm. but no. <laughs> At one point, we hear the nuns in her thoughts, mm-hmm. which are just dirty. No, um, she says, <laughs> she says, I wonder if any of these girls are a virgin or, or virgins are any young girls virgins anymore, which yeah. is funny because Donna is right. Um, but she's the only one that is. Yeah. And then uh, Donna and her are talking the next day and Donna's talking about how she kind of wishes that maybe she had chosen this life sometimes. Where, you know, like it's a lot, you know, most of the problems are, are gone and stuff like mm-hmm. that, she thinks. And because, you know, no one's, every life has some problems. Right. Um, but uh, then the, the nun, and this is, this is like, I want I want a story about this nun. This is very subtle, understated. It's not fleshed out at all in the episode. And she just kind of goes, sometimes I, I, I think the opposite. Way. Right. Like she's somewhat regretting her decision to join this order. And it's like, that's a fat, that's fascinating. I, I want to delve into that. They don't, it's just it. That's it. Well, I mean, I, I imagine most nuns, at least at some point, have to wonder what would life be like if I weren't a nun. I mean, sure. Because there's so much that's closed off from them. Right. Yeah. They get none. <laughs> right. Hey, hence the name. But yeah, so Donna's upset about her man problems and, and literally thinking about becoming a nun for a moment. Um, but so they all head back to their lives. Nobody becomes a nun, thank God. Like, <laughs> no one in the world becomes a nun. Couldn't you see Donna doing it, though? I could oh, totally sure. see her being a nun. Absolutely. She'd be a good nun. Yeah, she wouldn't be a man. Um, and then Donna goes home. Well, Donna and Valerie have a conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You first. can talk about that. Go ahead. Um, what? Because <laughs> I don't remember all of it. Oh, okay. So Donna and Valerie have a conversation where basically Valerie says, look, um, make sure that Ray is worth it to you. or is Because, you know, make sure that Ray's worthy of your love or, or whatever. Basically, she's saying, like, she doesn't think Ray's, you know, worth it. He's like, because, you know, I saw him push you down and, and all this stuff and, and you know, and Donna's kind of like, yeah, we all just forgot about it. And it's like, yes, the writers too. Like, the <laughs> dialogue from the writers' room made it into the episode, right? Because they really did just brush over that. Yeah, it's and, weird. And um, one of Valerie's thoughts when they're having their thoughts is uh, Donna's too good for Ray. Yeah, well, she is. So, yeah, and then when Donna does go home and break up with Ray, thank. God, and I, I just want to watch it on repeat. It just feel, felt so good to see it. Um, she really tells him off, too. Yeah, she does. She and does bring up a good point, though. What? She's like, oh, you know, what are you going to do? You know, you're mad. What are you going to do? Uh, push me like you did in Portland or shove me down the stairs like you did in uh, Santa Barbara or whatever? Or she, and she's like, or do you only uh, hit me when uh, we're out of town? And it's kind of like, yeah, that's sort of true. <laughs> kind of did just hit you when it was an out-of-town thing. Yeah. But yeah, Ray is finally fucking gone. But not without a weird send-off, because 
as he walks out the door, he's like, you'll be sorry. And yeah. And leaves like, what is that? Like, are you going to come beat her up? Like, what the fuck, Ray? What does that mean? You'll never, you'll never date in this town again. <laughs> and Donna says to him, too, before he leaves, that she has a lot of forgiveness in her heart, and she's even willing to forgive Valerie, but not him. Right. Which, like, I'm kind of curious. Why? Why would she because forgive the, Valerie? Because the abuse, I think, is, is yeah. more, the cheating and the abuse. So you think she would have forgiven him if it was just one or the other? Yeah. And also he lied. Because uh, she said, you know, she confronted him and he was like, yeah, one time. And she was like, uh, no, uh, Valerie told me everything. It was twice, not once. Yeah. And he's like, nah, fuck. <laughs> that goes, bitch. Actually, that's what he says. That bitch. Like, yeah. what the fuck, dude? That's not her fault. Yeah. Like, Although she did kind of entrap you into it, but does it does it really make it that much worse if it was once or twice? I mean, either way, he slept with somebody else. Yeah, I don't think so. That's I mean, me. the lying part, sure, but I don't think it matters. It could have been ten times. At the that point, it's done. Once it's once, yeah, I think it's <laughs> it's like uh, you know, it, it's like getting pregnant. You can't, you know, once you're pregnant, that's yeah. Once you cheat, there. you cheated. <laughs> it's over. So, that's all the girls' storyline, I think. Girls, girls, girls. Yeah, that's uh, the boys' storyline right there. Girls, girls, girls. That's Mrs. Garrett from uh, The Facts of Life. Um, Yeah, yeah, that that is true. So, let's do the boys' storyline. So, Steve, Brandon's having some kind of financial problems, first of all. Like, he, he... He went... It's vague. Yeah, he mentions it to Nat that he like he needs some money to for something for the house. He went over the house budget is, yeah. is what he says. And Nat's like, ask your parents for money. And he's like, no, this is my fault, my problem. I'm going to fix it. Right. And then Steve says, hey. Steve's already at the table. It's, it's almost like a common thing. Because <laughs> parents like, I'm having money problems and it's like steve materializes <laughs> right? at the table with this dude and it's like meet this location scout he loves your house <laughs> so he's he gets him uh signed up for a movie to be shot at his house for twelve hundred dollars a day yeah which is not bad no i'd take it for sure and you know everybody's excited oh they're gonna be shooting a movie mm-hmm and Brandon's like he says to his little editor girlfriend know, girlfriend whatever. or whatever um hey you know come why don't you come over and watch the movie and stuff like that let's watch him film it yeah we already know at this point though that it's a pornographic film yes because Steve reveals it to Ray Raymond and uh David but Steve didn't know at first right no Steve knew the whole time. Steve knew the whole time okay he just didn't want to reveal it to Brandon as soon as Brandon signs the contract and leaves he says to Ray and David, yeah, it's a porno. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't come right out and say it, but they, uh, you know. Yeah. They love, they have their euphemisms. Skin flick. So he knew that Brandon. Art house film. He knew Brandon wouldn't agree. Fuck yes, he knew. <laughs> so he tricked you him. Think, you think that Boy Scout Brandon uh, fucking Walsh is going to be like, oh yeah, sure, let's film a porno in my house. <laughs> And um, at one point, Steve Steve was, like you said, saying to somebody, oh, you know, some of these films end up in the art houses, and they're like, excuse me, what's the title of this film? And the guy says, uh, Topless, Topless Pizza Party 3. Yes. Because <laughs> that's definitely going to end up in an art house. And Here's the thing, though. I'd never watch it, Carol. You'd never watch Topless Pizza Party? Why? No, I'd never watch Topless Pizza Party 3. But you'd watch because one and two. I would feel. I feel like I would. I wouldn't get the nuance and the uh, <laughs> and the flavor of the story unless I watched Topless Pizza Party one and two. Right. <laughs> well, you know the flavor is all over Steve, so it's okay. Oh, God. Is the flavor uh, the name of one of the performers? Right. Well, he begs, 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 begs to be in this movie. Of course he does. Why? He that this is this is a hundred percent what he would do. By the way, is he dating Claire? They had a kiss. Yeah, like, he what, is. What the fuck? I mean, like, I don't, I don't think they're officially dating, but like, they kissed each other, and they've been on a couple dates. So yeah, yeah, cuddles, cuddles, and tender heart. Right. Yeah, he's not being very tender hearted right now. No. So they they cast him as the delivery man for the pizza. Yeah, because somebody calls in sick or whatever. 
Yeah. Somebody's uh, penis is in a splint. So he sits down with this box of pizza because they invite him in. They're like, oh, no, we didn't order pizza, but come on in. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a normal thing. <laughs> Let's critique this fictional <laughs> porno movie. <laughs> And then they start tickling him, which seems like a really weird thing to do in a porn. Here's the thing. This is the weirdest pornographic <laughs> film I've ever seen in my life. Because it's pretty clear he's not going to have sex with any of them. Right. He's not signing up to have sex with any of them. So there's not a sex scene in this scene. The women have their, their tops on in this scene. So they're not topless. So right there, that's false advertising. (laughs) And like you said, they just start tickling him and he laughs. And the director, I anticipated the director and the pizza falls all over him. And he's like, oh, it's hot. You know, and it's everything. What do they do to this fucking pizza? Right. Because he keeps talking about how fucking hot it is. He touches it against (laughs) his mouth and it's like, it starts to burn. (laughs) Did that, pre- pizza. did that priest from fucking uh, Temple of Doom <laughs> bless it like he did that heart so it just like incinerates? <laughs> Apparently. That pizza's sauce is made out of the same thing as uh, the alien's blood in the alien. Ew. But anyway, it's so it's so weird. And I'm like the director's looking at everything. He calls cut and I expect him to be like, what the fuck was that? But he didn't. He goes, that was perfect. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Let's do it again for coverage. And it's, was so what weird. are you talking about? Like, what? And then, okay, so Brandon has invited the editor girl to come watch the movie. Yeah. She supposedly had other plans. So he comes home, discovers it's a porn. And, and then he just kind of gets into he's it. Like, he's like, whatever. It's, fine, right? it's 1200 bucks. And then she shows up because her plans got canceled. Mm-hmm. And she is just livid and thinks he's disgusting and they're all disgusting. And What do you think of this, her reaction? I think it's a little over the top. I yeah, mean, agreed. And it's not like he was in the movie. It's not, you know, if she was Steve's girlfriend, I could understand. If it was Claire. Yeah. But Brandon was just there and she's like, I find it disgusting. So if you came into the house mm-hmm. and saw that that I had a pornographic crew on set and everything and all the girls there. How would you react? Okay, well, let's back this up for a minute because we live boop, together. Boop, boop. So I'd be upset because you didn't ask okay. because you just said, hey, let's film a porn here where you live. So in this scenario, you're but more like Brandon. I'm more like Steve. <laughs> in, in the scenario of Brandon's girlfriend showing up there, I would not have freaked out right away right i might have given him a minute to explain maybe asked a couple questions Mm -hmm. she jumps to the conclusion that he invited her there she's like you were twisting my arm to get me here because you want me in this movie or something like that (laughs) i I don't remember like yeah she want he want she thought he wanted her to be part of it so then she leaves and the director's like hey where's she going (laughs) we could put a nurse hat on her (laughs) she's pretty yeah Everyone else is dressed as cheerleaders. What is this movie? <laughs> That's a very good question. So then Brandon gets so pissed off because his girlfriend was upset that he tears up the contract. The damage is done, you idiot. Right. He's like, get, get the, the fuck money. out of here. It's like, let them finish filming their movie. What the fuck? Right. Like, Brandon, fuck off. So, he doesn't even stay there. Yeah. I think they finished filming. I think Steve was just like, don't worry about him. But... Then who's going to get the money? Steve. Mm. I'll just put it in the cookie jar or whatever. <laughs> Maybe. Because Brandon goes goes to the editor's house and knocks for 12 hours until she fucking answers or whatever. That's a lot of knocks. Yeah, and then uh, she says he'll need to be deloused before he can come in because he's, you know. Right, because they have lice. Right. Because they're, they're, they're working in, it's, it's, it's. Women who decided to work in a pornographic, the pornographic film industry, so they must be fucking garbage, I guess, right? Yeah, she's... That's a little judgmental to me. Oh, yeah. I thought feminism was about all colors or whatever, right? Sure. Like anything anyone wants to do. Who says she... Well, I guess she says she's a feminist. Whatever. I think that's the perspective. He's like, I'm a feminist. Yeah, whatever. But she forgives him and lets him in. And, and then, lets him inside her, too. Yeah, yeah, he spends the night. 
That's true. And they have sex. Even and, without the delousing. And then even more weirdness. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is, I want to talk about this too. In the morning, he wakes up. There's a note. Yeah, it just says, went for a run, be back. He gets up and starts making the bed. She walks in and is super excited because he passed her test. She said, you passed my test. He's like, what? You made my bed. What the fuck? That's my test. No one ever has made my bed before. No one's ever passed. She is so fucking crazy. What a fucking weird test. Right? What a weird, specific test. What is that? Like, I kind of liked her before, but now I think she's just messed up. I just wanted to end up on a pile. What the fuck? <laughs> right? What is going on? What? Yeah, like, what does that tell her about him exactly? I, t- I don't know. I mean, uh, he's clean. We already know he's clean. I mean, unless she, this was the, the first time she saw his house. And it was full of porn stars, and maybe she doesn't. But I mean, she walks in, and there's a bunch of porn stars in the bed. I knew it. <laughs> We're breaking up. <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, I guess maybe that he'll take care of her. I don't know. It's weird. It's She's weird. Fucking weird. What would you do if you were him and she said that to you? I, I would break up with her immediately. Would you? Yes. <laughs> I'd be like, "Well, you just failed my test." Right. <laughs> No tests needed in uh, the relationship. Holy Thank you. shit. There is one aspect of this we haven't discussed. So What's we got that? The, we got the boy story. We've got the girl story. But there's one little outlier there. One little fucking fly in the ointments. What? When they're at the... <gasps> Dylan! Well, yes, but that's not who I was thinking of. <laughs> I forgot about Dylan, actually. <laughs> Me too. But uh, when they're at the convent, <laughs> you're a weirdo. Um, <laughs> I am a weirdo. This is true. When they're at the convent, Kelly gets a call from oh, her yeah, boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was trying to talk about that. Who is with his art dealer, apparently. And they start fucking making out. Oh, yeah. She's definitely fucking him. So, yeah, that's great. He's yeah. cheating on Kelly. He's cheating on Kelly with his art dealer. Who, by the way, looks like she could be his mother. Oh, yeah. Like, it's messed up. She's, I mean, maybe not his mother, but she is definitely at least 10 years older than him. Yeah. It's weird. And she has power over him because she's his art dealer. Yeah. Which maybe he'll try to use as an excuse when he gets caught later, but it's no excuse. Everyone cheats on everyone in the fucking world in this yeah. show. Nobody can keep it in their pants. No. It's kind of depressing. Yeah. So Dylan, Dylan, um, the Noxima girl yes. is mad at him. She's been avoiding him. He hunts her down in the library, and, and he says, "I know you've been mad at me because you haven't been talking to me. So what did I do?" <laughs> right. It's kind of weird. And she said, "You know, because you were snooping in my dad's study." Yeah. Apparently, she found out. I guess Bruno told her about that. Like, it seemed like Bruno and Dylan were good. I don't know why he'd tell on him, but he did. And um, he's like, oh, you know, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. I, and um, I don't remember how he explained it. Something about curiosity. Yeah. And then um, she says, my dad knew your dad. Yeah. She she tells him that. And then she's like, my dad wants to meet you. So we're going to have dinner together. So he goes with her to dinner. They, I think, finish their entire meal before it's kind of drawn out. We keep cutting back to them as yeah. the other, other storylines are going on. But it's basically like, oh, that was your dad on the phone. He wants you to go ahead and uh, start drinks. Oh, that was your dad on the phone. Go ahead and order. Oh, he's going to be, he's not going to make it, you know, kind of thing. And he's like, oh, he wants to talk to you. So she goes to leave the table. And when she goes to leave the table, he shows up. Yeah, her dad and Bruno or some other dude. I it don't wasn't know. Bruno. It was, yeah. it was a African-American gentleman. Oh, yeah. So, anyways, he, basically, we were wrong this whole time because he did fucking kill Dylan's dad, most likely, based on what was said. I mean, he didn't come right out and admit it, but... It seems heavily implied, I guess. It's fucked up. It contradicts a lot of stuff from last week. The fact that he's got the, the, a picture of him with his arm around a guy who, apparently, he killed just in his office to look at every fucking day. 
And the fact that Bruno was like, oh, yeah, I thought a lot of your dad. He was, he was a cool guy. Right. Well, maybe what Bruno, the fuck? Maybe Bruno doesn't know. Maybe not. But they sit down and he's like, yeah, I heard, you know, you, uh, I thought when my my buddy, the mobster dangled you over the fucking ravine or whatever, you'd let this go. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm not going to fucking let this go. And he's like, that's when I was that's when I was worried about dying an unnatural death or whatever. And he's like, now nah, you're not. And he's like, no, nah, now nah, I don't give a fuck. Right now. Now. Now it doesn't matter what happens to me. I'm going to take you down. And if anything happens to me, I got a safety deposit box full of it, evidence that'll put you away. And it's like that GIF that Brandon <laughs> printed from the uh, internet. What are you talking about? Yeah, like we weren't aware of any evidence. And my other question is, if he does have the evidence, and maybe it's a bluff, but if he does have the evidence, he should give it to the FBI. Right. So he goes down. And he says something like, you think I'd let my daughter fucking date Jack McKay's son, that piece of shit? He talk, basically talks about how he hates him. Yeah. And uh, he's like, you know, I, I brought, uh, what's his name? The, I don't remember the name of the guy, but this guy for insurance. And he's got a gun with a silencer underneath the table pointed right at uh, Dylan's testicles. Yeah. And Dylan's like, yeah, I don't trust you either. I came prepared. And he points a gun at the fucking dude. Yep. And he's like, yeah, we can all die here tonight. Is that what you want? All under the table in this nice, fancy restaurant. There's mm-hmm. guns everywhere. It's kind of weird. But basically, so like he gets up. He's like, he goes, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. You're going to fucking pay for what you did, no matter what. So he, this is the stupidest plan in the world, by the way. He basically just comes right out and says, I'm coming right for you. Yeah. Element of surprise be damned. Yeah. And then he leaves. And, I mean, obviously, this guy can get him. I mean, he's well-connected and stuff. Sure. Like He's connected to that mobster. But they had whisked the girl off somewhere. Back home. And then gave her a bunch of, like, lies about Dylan and mm-hmm. why that, like, well, not totally lies. Like, she said, he told me you were using me, you have some kind of vendetta, which, that's true. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, it started out that way, but, you know, I, that was before I, not, not like before I got to know you, that was before I saw you. <laughs> so, he's basically implying that she's just hot. Yeah. That's all he cares about. Whatever. Um... But yeah, he says, you know, your dad killed my dad, and I, I'm going to bring him down. And she's like, there's no way that he did that. Yep. So that's the end of them. Yep. Relationship over. No I'll more tell you, I'll tell you what, girl. though. That's, she'll probably still be on the show. Because um, this storyline's not over yet. I'm yeah. sure she'll pop up again. But um, that's the best thing, honestly, instead of him fucking, like, pretending. Yeah. It's good that she knows. Because no matter what her dad did or didn't do, she didn't have anything to do with it. Right. I feel so bad for her, though. She must feel all dirty. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he have should, they fucked? I think so. Like, I, they didn't say for sure, but it seems like it. Yeah. Maybe not. But even if not, we know they made out and stuff, so. Yeah. yeah. I would be very upset if I were her, too. That was not right. No good. Dylan shouldn't have done that to her. I agree. And he I should just, have just fucking killed uh, him when he was in the elevator with him, and he could have. Yeah, but then he would have gone to jail. Yeah. But I guess he doesn't care about that. More either. likely he would have been murdered by uh, the two security guards. Guy right. Next to him. Right, murder-suicide. Okay. Oh, happy, but, happy thoughts. But that is the episode. That is. So you can write us at latefee1994 at AOL.com. Mm-hmm. And... You can check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com mm-hmm. and share the tapes with your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.